Hi guys, in this video, I'd like to demonstrate my Treeview Control Widget plugin, which you can use to create your own customizable Treeview right from your UMG widget interface. So you can find this plugin in your plugin window under the category of UMG. We are going to start by creating a new widget blueprint. Let's name this as Demo Treeview. Here you can find the Treeview widget under the Views category. Let's drag this to the interface and scale it up. Currently our Treeview does not have any data. So we'll start by adding nodes on it. Here we can see an add a parameter called tree nodes, which we are going to use to create our tree structure. Let's quickly add 10 elements in this array. Now in every tree node element, we can see that there are three variables, node ID, node name, and parent ID. Node ID is a unique ID for each tree element. Node name represents string value of a particular tree node. And parent ID links an element to its parent. Now let's fill up the node name parameter for every node. Once done, let's hit compile. So now we can see that the data has been loaded, but the tree structure is not visible yet. That's because the parent IDs of all the nodes are zero. We will be modifying the parent IDs in a bit. Let us start styling our tree view. You can customize the appearance of a tree view from this tree view style parameter. Remember that for any color changes to take effect, you need to uncheck this inherit option. So now we'll move back to the tree node variable and we'll start modifying the parent IDs. Here, you need to remember that if the value of parent ID is n, it indicates that n minus 1th element of the array is its parent. So if the node ID is n, the parent ID cannot be n plus 1 because that will mean that the node itself is its parent. So let's change the parent ID of a single node and hit compile. Here you can see that the node 2 has disappeared and a white squared shape box appears beside node 1. That is just a default image for the expandable arrow which can be customized from this arrow style parameter. Once done, let's continue editing our parent IDs. Now we are left with only two root nodes. Now let's add a simple border background for this widget. Now we'll move to our level blueprint and add this widget to the viewport. So here it is, we have our very first review control ready. Next, we are going to look at how we can dynamically create nodes for our review. I have dragged another review here, but we won't be populating it manually. Let's switch to our graph editor, where we can get a reference to our second review. Remember that to get a reference of your widget in your graph editor, you need to declare that widget as a variable. Now, obviously you need to come up with your own logic regarding how you want to populate a tree view. In this case, I will be creating a simple for loop and add a tree node at every iteration.
here you need to remember that once you finished populating a tree view you have to call the function called create tree otherwise your changes will not be visible so here you can see that our tree got successfully generated so if you are generating tree view programmatically remember that you need to call the create tree function to ensure that your tree gets updated with the latest changes so far we have covered the basic of our tree view control now we will look into some advanced topics starting from how we can add our own custom widget as a tree view row this is pretty useful if you don't just want an expandable arrow and a text as your tree view row you may also want other elements like buttons or images so now we will be seeing how we can add our own user defined widget as a tree view row so let's create a completely new widget which we will be using as our tree view row so in our new widget let us add an image and a simple text now we head over to the graph and create a couple of variables that we need to bind our two controls that we just created so let's move back to our initial widget here in our content category we can see that there are three parameters we will talk about the first two parameters in a bit for now we just need this default row content parameter only so let's assign our newly created row widget here so now we can see that our custom rows are populated but currently these only have default values here we would need a mechanism that will help us edit each of these rows separately let us see how we can do that to modify rows at run time we need to trigger an event now events are not visible if the widget is not set as variable so let us do that first let's give this widget a name and make this a variable now we can see that there are four events for this widget we only need to use the first one for now on generated row this event gets fired every time a new row is generated for this widget okay so we can see that there are two parameters in this event the first one is just the node structure of the respective node and the second parameter is the row widget that we have generated in this particular node so as you can see we have been able to successfully modify our custom rows now you may want to use different widgets for different rows in the same tree view control so here you can see a couple of array parameters both of these will accept custom widgets as elements 
The first one, row contains by parent, will customize all the child rows for a specified parent. The second parameter will customize the rows based on the node ID. So let us create a new widget having a different row style. So now let's add an element in the row content by parent array. Here we have two parameters. The parent ID parameter will be used to modify all the child nodes of a given parent. And the row content parameter will take our newly created row widget as an input. Okay, so now we can see all the root nodes got affected. Now let's try changing the parent ID and see what happens. So as we can see, all the child nodes having the parent ID as 2 got modified. Now let us create another widget. Now let us create an element in this array called row content by id. This array will modify the rows having given node ids. So here we give a node id and add our newly created widget in this row content parameter. So you can see that the element having node id as 5 is modified. Now we just move over to the graph editor and modify the text values of the newly created widgets. So we have one more parameter to talk about, vertical scroll bar style. You have definitely noticed the vertical scroll bar which appears when the tree view contains go out of sight. That can be customized through this parameter. Okay, so now we are going to discuss about another event called selection change event, which will get triggered when you are selecting a row in your tree widget. This is really very, very useful when you want something to happen on your row selection. The item variable is the node structure of the selected row. Here we are just going to print the selected row name just to demonstrate how it works. Okay, so here you can see that the corresponding row name is getting printed successfully. Next, we will talk about expansion changed event, which gets triggered when an item is expanded or collapsed. So here we are just going to print the respective item and its expansion state. So here we can see that our expansion changed event is getting successfully triggered. Now we'll move on to another feature that is very useful in many scenarios. You have already seen how we can handle expansion change event of a particular row. So now I will be showing you how you can manually expand or collapse nodes. I have created three buttons to expand, collapse or toggle expansion state of a node respectively. And a text box where you have to enter the respective node ID. Now, as you can see that in the button click events, I have called the respective functions of our tree view.
So here we enter the node ID we want to expand and we try out all the three buttons to see how it works. This particular feature is really useful if you don't want the custom expandable arrow and instead you want to expand items by clicking on the custom row widget itself. So that's all for now. I really hope that you like my plugin and let me know if you face any issues.